Amsterdam Film Show. So from the 4th of October, A Star is Born is on general release in Amsterdam and the Netherlands. Our critic, David Sortling, tells us what he thought. When it comes to film, I think generations are longer than they are in human terms. For instance, you know, every 10 years or so is a new generation. But in films, I think it takes about 20 years. And a good example of that is with the remake and re-release of A Star is Born, which is a film that's been done over and over again since 1937. Actually, a little earlier, but it was called A Star is Born for the first time in 1937 with um, Janet Gaynor and Frederick March, and it won an Oscar for Best Original Screenplay. And it really was a story of the time because it's a melodrama. And melodramas were popular back in the 30s, the beginnings of film. But also, the film, the story of the film was based supposedly on no less than four Hollywood couples of the time. And so there's a basic story of, you know, an, an aging movie star, actor, uh, discovers a young actress and helps her build up her career. And as her star rises, his starts to decline due to alcoholism. And, and finally, he gives up his life for hers. Pure melodrama. Well, about 20 years later, they added music into the mix of the, of the formula by casting Judy Garland as the woman opposite James Mason. Now, by that time, Actors were a little bit more picky about what kind of roles they wanted to do. So nobody wanted to be a failed actor. Marlon Brando turned it down. He said, I'm too successful to people to believe that I should be a failed actor. <laughs> um, but there was a big hit in the 50s. Both Judy Garland and James Mason won Golden Globe Awards. Fast forward another 20 years, 1976. Barbara Streisand and, surprise, Chris Christopherson do it, and they bring it totally into the music world, the rock world, which worked better than the old Hollywood way that it was done before. Um, again, Barbara Streisand, this was a project for her. The men, you know, uh, James Taylor didn't want to do it. Mick Jagger didn't want to do it. Chris Christopherson, they took a chance on him. He turned out to be great. The movie, they both won Golden Globe Awards. It was the second highest grossing film that year in 1976. Still pretty much the same basic story, melodrama. Fast forward to 40 years to today, Bradley Cooper decides he wants to play the rock star. Now, they try as much as possible to do an update here. You know, they've, <coughs> they've got Lady Gaga playing a not so much young singer, an early 30s um, woman who never really pursued her singing career, even though she's really good. She plays nights in a drag bar singing her songs, but <clears throat> she's ready to break out of that life, and Bradley Cooper helps her to do that. Now, they've got the YouTube generation, they've got the kind of star that Lady Gaga is, uh, all of that brings it right up to today. But the problem is, today, melodramas aren't quite to taste. And the world has changed a lot. For instance, it seems to me that rather than a man who might be jealous of a young star eclipsing his career, rather than maybe killing himself, he'd kill her. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a whole, there's a whole different... Yet, the, the plotting of the movie stays pretty much to the formula that was started back in the 1930s. That being said, Lady Gaga is fantastic. She is really... It's the first time that I see her... Okay, I saw a couple of episodes of American Horror Story. She was doing the same kind of presentational performance you know, that she, she does in her videos. But in this, I felt like for the first time, I really saw Lady Gaga for the girl that she actually is, as opposed to the star that she is. Um, it's a beautiful performance. The singing is fantastic. In fact, the music scenes in the movie in general are great, partly because they actually filmed them at rock concerts. Bradley Cooper's big rock scene was filmed in Glastonbury, ironically, during Chris Christopherson's set. <laughs> um, it's, it's really, it has a real sense of being there. They filmed all the music live, rather than lip-syncing, because 
the story is told through the music more so. They've, they've really trimmed the, the melodramatic scenes down to a minimum. The one, the thing that, if there's a theme to the movie, Bradley Cooper was talking about this on Graham Norton recently, and he said, you know, it was really about, he saw the story as about a, a woman finding her voice and really focusing on the artist emerging, which is a great idea for a movie, great idea for someone like Lady Gaga to do. Well, write a movie that really focuses on that instead of dragging in this this old 1930s plot, because that's to me where the movie kind of sags every once in a while. I mean, near the end of the film, and I'm not giving out any spoiler here because actually they use it in the trailer, um, <laughs> Sam Elliott, who plays uh, Bradley Cooper's brother beautifully, um, has a line about, you know, the same stories are told over and over again. There are just 12 notes between octaves. What changes is how the artist makes them come alive. Great idea. And I think Lady Gaga does that beautifully in the film. Bradley Cooper is just fine. The direction for, for his first time directing is okay. The screenplay by Eric Roth, who's done a lot of hit movies, is solid. It just seems a little bit dated, despite all the chances to bring it into the 21st century. And if I were to give it a score, I think I would probably put it at, well, because of the performances and the spectacular qualities of it, I think I'd give it an eight. Amsterdam Film Show. 